I mean, earlier on, I was an alcoholic. Fortunately, I never had a DUI. But God took that out of my life. I used to smoke. God took that out of my life. I remember a pastor in church years ago that said, if God wanted you to smoke, you'd put a smokestack right at the top of your head. I thought that was kind of funny. So you go through life and go through all these troubles and, you know, your victory seem to be very small. But there's, there's victory in, in God. There's victory living in the Word. That's the peace that I get and the victory that I get. Is understanding Him and on your left and to realize that uh, He will comfort you. He will discipline you without a doubt. But no different than a father would discipline his child. I guess um, when I was saved, that was probably, I think I was either, I think I was 29 years old. A neighbor of ours invited us to church and we weren't living for God. I believed in him, but we weren't living for him. <coughs> so, a neighbor invites church and it happened to be an apostolic Pentecostal church. <coughs> Excuse me. And one day I stood up and called to the altar and I went to the altar and I cried my eyes out. It had to be, it seemed like it was an hour long that I just sit there and weep and weep and weep. And that was the cleansing process that I was going through. I was also baptized that same night in the basement. And I have a testimony about when I come out of that water, I felt like I was snow white. I don't know if anybody has experienced those baptisms, but I was still a very young child in Christ. And I had to learn to eat small portions. And I tried to change everything around me, change my parents that were still alive at the time and change everyone I talked to and tried to share the gospel. But I wasn't doing it the right way. I scared them off is what I did. On your left. Thank you. So I learned that uh, I just had to let my light shine outwards. I didn't, you know, I, all the light was shining down on me and it was going straight back up. That wasn't sharing the gospel. And I don't want to sit there and say I'm a religious zealot because I'm not. But I do know with all the blessings that I've got in my life and the changes that I've changed, he's changed in my heart. And that's where it started. It starts with the heart. Then I'm very at peace with myself. And I always know that the grace will be there and the comfort. So we have to depend on Him every day. A lot of times I'll be either riding along on my bike or you know, you're walking in the store and something upsets you about somebody else what they said but we try to judge them that's not our job that's God's job to judge as I tell people that you can judge their actions but you can't judge them there are many disappointments in life I um I attended a church for a number of years here local <clears throat> that we did a lot of food outreaches. A couple times a month we'd go into different areas of the city and we'd give away bags of groceries to people. We would get a lot of our food from the food bank and we only paid so much on a pound at the time. I think it was like nine cents on the pound. We're going back 15, 18 years now, so. Food didn't cost a whole lot. But as I started doing these food banks, or these uh, food outreaches, I never realized that I had such a passion to do it. And having a heart for people. 
to pray with them. I remember just several of us sitting around somebody that's praying, praying for them with uh, cancer. We've had cases where they had stage four cancer. And we all sit around and prayed for them. Some people didn't make it. Others were healed. We had one particular gentleman that we prayed for, and a month later, after we go back to do another outreach at that location, he just told us that he was completely healed. <clears throat> he had gone to the doctor, and they said there was nothing there. We know that's nothing, but it's not a miracle. It is a miracle, but it's God's miracle. So through prayer, these things happen. It's just like I just went by a uh, blessing box here on the uh, bikeway where people will bring food into these boxes and replenish them once a month and they call it a blessing box. It's just people are, people really don't want to, they're embarrassed to have to get food and help when they need it. So, with these blessing boxes, they can just drive up there in dark time or after dark. And they need food. There's food in these blessing boxes. So that's that's really a tremendous ministry. Well, we've already came five miles, so, so that was pretty quick. It always dope does go quick when you're talking about the Lord. But you know, I remember being out of work back in the mid to late 70s and tough times. Interest rates at the time were 8% on a house and we like and lost our house the first month we were there. We couldn't even afford $119 a month. So, we was able to hang on, thank God. But, a little story, I was out of work in the, uh, towards about 1981, got laid off from the companies, so I was sitting talking to my wife and I said, you know, I don't know what, we, what we're going to do, we're, house pain is coming up, we can barely buy enough food, we'd had two sons at this time, they were young, six and eight years old. <clears throat> so my wife said, well, you're, you're good at two things. You're good at doing insulation and you're good at pest control. Because I had worked for a national company back in the early 70s and got a little experience there, but didn't last long there, it didn't work. So I am open a phone book and the first, first ad in the book, was from a local company, a big full page ad. That, that uh, my wife said, well, why don't you call them or get down there and fill out an application. So I went down, filled out an application, and they hired me that day. Back then, they didn't, they didn't do drug testing stuff. Wasn't worried about that anyway, but. So not only did I get the job, with limited experience from a previous employer, they gave me a company car as well. Everything paid for, gas, insurance, everything. Just nothing but a rolling advertising billboard for them. But boy, did it really help me out at the time. So I uh, was a route technician for a number of years. And I serviced most of the commercial accounts. Back then we had some uh, several commercial accounts that we did. So I learned my skill set mainly there. But a couple years later they wanted to become a sales manager and a branch manager and I did that. So I uh, went to another city local. Morning. And I became a um, branch manager for the branch, did that a couple years, 
and then after I came back and took over with the main branch, another company called Waste Management came in and bought the company. This company was around since 1936, so they've been around for almost 40-some years at the time of the acquisition. Well, as they did this acquisition, somehow I wound up getting my boss's job. And I really didn't understand for years what happened, why he left. Good friend of mine, he taught me everything in the business. And uh, what they did, they had everybody take these psychological profile tests, they're three, four hundred questions long. And, and when I got done, I found out that I scored extremely high on sales, but I would never be a branch manager. So that is kind of what happened. So waste management at the time, this was probably 1990, I think, somewhere around there. They only, they only acquired us for one year, by the way. But they said, well, here's your American Express card, and you need to go to Livonia, Michigan to pick up your company car. Back then, you had those big phones that had an antenna in the back of the windshield, back windshield, and I had one of those. Well, I thought I had something back then. But, um... So I did that for about a year.